This video will cover the use of domains in TD Direct. Domains allow you to create a subset of nodes, surfaces, or solids that you can refer to collectively in Thermal Desktop. The best part is that anytime you use domains in conductors, contactors, or heat loads, they will remain when you update the mesh. If instead you just click on the surfaces one by one to apply a heat load, for example, the heat load would be gone when you updated the mesh. A domain can be applied to an edge, surface, or solid. If you apply a domain in TD Direct to an edge, it will give you a domain set of the nodes on that edge in Thermal Desktop. It will also create a domain set of the edges, which can be used in edge contactors. If you apply a domain to a surface, you'll get a domain set of the surfaces and another domain set of the nodes. And if you apply a domain to a solid, you will get domain tag sets of the solids and of the nodes in Thermal Desktop. I have some sample geometry. It's a heat sink and a chip or something that needs to be cooled. The first domain I want to make is on the depressions of this heat sink. I'll select one and then use the selection tab to easily select all the others and then I'll add the ends. then select Thermal, Domains, Add. I'll call it Fin Blades, which I'll use for convection. The next step is for the heat load. This entire chip will be dissipating heat, so I want to triple click to select the solid. Just like the surfaces, I'll add a domain, I'll call it Chip. Now this chip will be in contact on the bottom side with the board that is already in the thermal model. However, it's only a subset of the bottom surface that will be in contact. There are many ways to make a subset of a surface, such as projecting one object onto another or sketching on a face. For this example, I will just copy the edges. Double click on the edge to select the ring. Set the option to copy edge and then pull inwards 0.2 inches. This split up the face, so now I want to select the outer region and select Thermal, Domains, Add Chip to Board. Let's mesh this and see what we have. I will cut out meshing time from the video. The first thing to see is the Domain Set Manager. It shows all the domains for nodes, surfaces, and solids we created. Another and often more useful option is the Model Browser, which makes it very easy to see the domains. List, Domains. Here you can easily see what's contained in each domain. To use the domains, I'll start with the heat load. I'll create a heat load on a solid, and then down here in the command line it gives me the option for domains. Click on that, and it brings up suitable domains. I asked for a solid, so it automatically filters out everything that isn't a solid domain. I'll select chip, and then click OK and enter. This form does not list all the solids, only the domain itself. The things in the domain can change, but when it comes time to run, this will simply take what's in there and apply the heat load accordingly. I have an air node, so I will select a node to surfaces conductor. I'll select the node, and then again select the domain. This creates the conductors between the nodes and the domain. Without this, I'd have to click on all of those surfaces in the domains one by one. Now for the connection to the board. I'll create a contactor from the domain chip to board to the board. We'll 
Let's go back to the TD Direct model. I want to add two more domains. For this model, the contact area between the chip and the heat sink is critical. A match mesh will do that, but let me put a domain on each of the faces in contact. First I'll do the top of the chip and create a domain called Chip Interface. Then I'll select the bottom of the heat sink and call it Fin Interface. After resyncing the mesh, let's check this out. The model browser shows some domains I did not create, and they say matched. To understand this, first let me show you the domain I created for the bottom of the fins. The match domain is just a subset of that. Looking at the match domain for the top of the chip, we can see those meshes are identical. These automatically generated domains are perfect for contactors. So I'll create one, and for the from group, it doesn't matter which I pick because they're identical. Then I'll just pick the other one for the to group. The matched mesh means there'll be no lateral conduction along the interface, and the integration interval can be set to 1. That's all there is to it. The use of domains has made selecting parts of the mesh easier, and has made selections persistent when the mesh is updated. Another use of the domains is in the Mesh Editor Action Script, and that will be covered in another video. For more information, see our tutorials, the videos in the CR Tech and Space Claim websites, our user forum, or call or email support and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching.